The fall of the last sanctuary in Ashfeld. A thousand years have passed since then. Our ancestors held out for six years against a hundred thousand desperate, starving warriors. Or, so the story goes. The Iron Legion is made up of many smaller legions. The Lion was the symbol of the Regal Legion. They were strong once. Now they have fallen to Blackstone might. Ashfeld. I was born here, out in the Scrublands. Twenty years ago, the Iron Legion had been on the verge of losing it to the Vikings entirely. Now, my Blackstone Legion had taken it back. That fort had been controlled by ten warlords in ten years. Daubeny was just the most recent. He joined the Blackstone Legion, and then tried to leave us. That would not stand unpunished. The Iron Legion has a habit of mounting warden statues in front of doors. But they are hypocrites. The oaths of a warden reach far beyond what any common Legion warrior can live up to. When we stop fighting against it, nature will always reassert itself. So it is with stone, so it is with plants, with animals. And so it is with people. So much of warfare is about walls, gates, hills, doors. Every day, battles are won and lost on the choice of battlefield alone. Almost every fortress in these lands was first built a millennium ago. We lay new construction on top of old and call it our own. We are children playing at Empire. Hervis Dobney. Blackstone for a single season. And then he thought to turn away from us. To take from us. That would prove his undoing. Holden Cross. My second in command and my most stalwart ally. Holden is a practical man of limited ambition, but of endless talent. We are fortunate to have him. Warriors rarely see the people their wars affect. The displaced, the murdered, the starving. I saw all that when I was younger. I never forgot the lesson. Machines of war. Many of them use plans that we do not fully understand. Techniques handed down through the generations that we have lost the theory for. They work just fine, though. The Sanctuary of Harrogate. The last remnants of the Iron Legion had held it, until the year that Warden came. After the battle, they were too weak to hold it. We Blackstones had to take over. Pity. This year's Viking Horde. When Mount Rust erupted, they lost the sun for months. Crops and animals died. They came south, raiding for supplies. They continue to raid Ashveld yearly. In the west, punishments like the cage have been outlawed. In Ashveld, however, we were less reluctant about using brutality to make a point. Iron Legionnaires are cattle. They fight when it's convenient for them, and run away from any challenge. The Blackstone Legion was my solution to that problem. We seven leaders of the Blackstone Legion took demon names. It is both as a warning to others, and a reminder to ourselves. We are strong, and must be sure of what we choose to do with that strength. Once, there were 15 of us in the Blackstone Circle. Eight times, one of us claimed the title of Warlord. Seven times, that Warlord proved too weak, too noble, or too blind to lead us. I am the Eighth. The others rest now, in their tombs. The geyser fields of Ashfeld were where the Iron Legion officially bowed the knee to the Blackstones and the Royals, and so many others. We chose that place for its history. 
Legends tell us that it was there that the ancient Viking lords had yielded Ashfeld to our people. When lava cools, it can form a marvel. A black glass that can be sharper than the sharpest blade. High in the mountains, there is a block of obsidian that has been cut into a round table. It is there that the Blackstone Legion was first formed. The children of Ashfeld claim to all follow the same god. But I have sat in their services and listened to their hymns. They do not agree on the laws of their master. And most of them do not follow their own ideals. When I took over the Blackstone Legion, the Vikings had permanent settlements in Ashfeld. Now, those were all gone. And soon, we would take the fight to them. We all want to be remembered. So many of my people fear the decorations of our savage foes. But I have never feared the demons of my enemies. I am their demon. The Vikings are ancient as we are. The difference is, they vanished for centuries. We never left. But any who doubt their claim to these lands need only look at the ruins their ancestors built for them. The Vikings have filled their mountains and valleys with horns and drums and signal fires. We were never going to slip into Valkenheim unnoticed. That is why I chose to enter through the front door. The Cataclysm was not one event, it was many. Lands rose and fell. The sky rained fire, ash and worse things. The seas rose and then retreated. It is a miracle that any of us are still here. The Vikings have raided every year for as long as I can remember. They sack, loot, burn. My village was destroyed by them. Mine and hundreds of others. Now, we would turn the tables. Our technology is what separates us from the Vikings. And with these, we would make the so-called impassable defense of the gates of Valkenheim meaningless. Valkenheim. Home of the invaders who call themselves Vikings. It had been 40 years ago that knights last crossed the threshold into that great valley. Whatever happened in there, we would certainly be remembered. The ancient kings of the Vikings were mighty. They sailed across the ocean, and when the seas froze, they were lost to history. And then, they came back. I am Apollyon. I was a warden once. Now, I have become something greater. I am the eighth warlord of the Blackstone Legion. The only one strong enough to survive. And through me, this land will see a new age. Wherever we go, the peaceful life that is called civilization scatters. It is a social agreement that is so easily dissolved. Fragile. The Vikings have always warred with themselves much more than with us. It is in their nature to feast on each other. That nature has been stolen from them. We would leave survivors to tell the tale of what had been lost at Svengard. And when they heard, they would come, looking for what was left. Svengard. The Vikings are so very careful to equitably distribute their food supplies. It all passes through Svengard. And in winter, most of it is stored there. We dragged our ram's machinery across Valkenheim. We had to hack down half a forest in a fortnight to build it. But without it, we would have come all that way just to be slain at the front door. 
The ancient name for these structures is Trilothon. I asked a Viking once what she thought they were for. She didn't know. She said they'd just always been there. We knew at Svengard that within a day, Viking ships would fill the harbor and their army would destroy us. But I intended to be long gone before that could happen. I am Apollyon. I have come to instruct. For too long, the fearful prey among the Vikings have whispered their lies of peace. Now, that era ends. We could have broken open that gate with a far smaller ram. But that would have taken time. Time that the Vikings would have used to reinforce. The legendary Jarl Gudmunder. In another time, he would have been a king. Beloved by his people. The fiercest of warriors. Whoever faced him would either become another notch in that belt of his, or become legend. The fortress of Svengard was home to many of the wealthiest Viking clans. The merchant trades always produce such people. Now they would have to fight for their food. The Vikings were long thought to be just a legend. A story we told ourselves. An ancient threat that once ruled the North. Then, centuries ago, they returned from across the sea. Even if their mastery of steel is not as complete as ours, they are nevertheless an endlessly inventive people. We underestimate their creativity at our peril. The Vikings suffered in the year after we struck them. No seed grain, no summer harvest. No harvest, no food for the winter. So, like all the other clans, the Warborn were starving. It takes a special kind of madness to eat and drink and make merry while your warriors fight and burn and die outside. Ragnar, was that kind of wolf. A vast forest once covered the valley of Valkenheim. We knights cleared that land before the Vikings returned. And when we did, we revealed the ancient ruins of the Warborn clans. Imagine our surprise. Vikings record the exploits of their greatest heroes in stone. The markers remind them of the debt of glory that must be paid to enter Valhalla. To die in battle is one thing. To die a legend is another. For a full year, the cranes and scaffolds and lumber mills of the Vikings stood silent. No time for building while contemplating my lesson. They had wolves to feed. In the wild, the strong feed on the weak. Yet, in our civilized world, it is the other way around. I will not allow that to continue. We build new structures on top of the sanctuaries left by our ancestors. But they never match the glory of our past. They were great. We have much to learn from them. A millennium ago, Valkenheim was the site of a vast Nordic empire. The Earth swallowed them whole. Now, in places, the rains slowly reveal that past. What else lurks beneath the soil, I wonder? Through example, we knights accidentally taught the Vikings the art of siege warfare. I like to think that, in turn, they showed us how to live free. The Vikings worship gods of wood, of storms, and of stone. The samurai gods are of fire, of wind, and of thought. The gods of the knights are iron, steel, and gold. But power 
That we agree on. The more glory a Viking earns, the greater their legend when they are gone. But unlike us, their gods require them to share that glory with the weakest among them. The Bearclaw clan crushed all resistance. They forced the other clans to serve them. Their warlord, Siv, was ruthless in her pursuit of power. I liked her. The Vikings like to tell stories about why they decorate their ships with monsters. But the simplest explanation is the best one. They do it to frighten their enemies. The Vikings had built up their settlements and shipyards over decades, centuries. It took a little more than a year for it all to fall into disrepair. Viking clans do not truly join one another. Alliances are common, but are just as commonly broken. The Warborn clans is just a way of saying all the clans who cannot defeat the Warborn in combat. Once the Blackstones were pushed out of Valkenheim, the Vikings would put their shipwrights and their lumber mills back to work. And then they would need a target. The runes of the Vikings and our own letters must have a common ancestor. The difference is that our letters can be drawn with a quill, whereas theirs require only a chisel. The war machines of the samurai often make ours look like toys. They learned much during their exodus and from many different peoples. If they hadn't, they wouldn't be such a threat. The sea fort of the samurai guarded one of the very few places in the mire where a fleet could safely come to shore. And it was an ancient place. Before the waters receded, that entrance was a canal. Imagine, ships sailing through into waters that are now only swamp. The world has changed. The samurai had no ancient ancestors in these lands. They came after the fall, from another land far to the east. But they had been... enthusiastic in their rebuilding. Beyond that fortress lay the mire. Acres of unforgiving swampland. And a natural defense for the samurai city beyond. That city was what the Vikings had come for. The fort's commander was Fujikyo. A samurai champion. His name had reached across the sea. Even the Vikings knew of his legend. There, the warborn raider would face him. Taking the beach was one thing. Crossing the mire was another. But there was no plunder to be gained along the shore. The wealth of the samurai lay beyond the swamp. The mire is a dreadful place for an army. It can swallow up an entire force without a trace. Its paths shift and change. But boats are no safer when your enemy has hidden catapults and fire. Control and defense of the mire is split among the many houses of the daimyo. Their defenses vary in quality but none of their defenders lack in skill. Five hundred years the samurai have been here. Long enough to call this place their home. Long enough for their work to fall into ruin. Still, we treat them like newcomers. The mire would claim many Viking lives if their scouts could not find a safe way through to the city. Or even if they could. The first scout group the Vikings sent out into the mire never returned. Nor the second. Nor the third. Within that city, the false emperor ruled from his palace. All samurai swore allegiance to him and to his family. They believe they revere unity and honor. In fact, they are simply afraid to be free. 
On days of peace, the samurai bells fill the sky with song. After that day, the song of peace would not ring for a long, long time. When my people see these statues, they often believe them to be gods or spirits, holy to the samurai. Why is it so hard for us to imagine that they are simply art? When the samurai came into these lands, new plants and animals came with them. They had brought them in caravans. They knew their home was failing. They sought to remake it here. The Vikings built flimsy war machines to break down rotten gates. That bridge was once unassailable. Now it was simply an open walkway. The Orochi that Ayu freed was no ordinary duelist or scout. Had that jail been broken open sooner, the Vikings perhaps would have stayed on that bridge. Once the bridge gate fell to the warborn raider, the Vikings swarmed into the city. Fortunately for the outnumbered samurai, the barbarians were only seeking plunder. The Imperial Palace. Added atop the city by the second of the new emperors to celebrate his own glory. A scar of indulgence on an otherwise honorable people. How many layers of civilization lie within that city? We ruled it for a time, but those first builders were not our ancestors. Nor were they samurai or any other living people. Lost to time, those first architects. The seventh new emperor had a river diverted to pass through the palace. They harnessed its power to automate machinery, carry away waste, and to irrigate their cliff gardens. Ingenious. Long ago, the samurai arrived in a land already inhabited. They were forced to live where others would not in the fens and wastelands and crags. And along the way, they learned to tame the dangers that we were afraid to touch. A monk once told me that true peace is the product of one's mind and body working in perfect harmony. A battlefield, then, is one of the most peaceful places you can be. Some of the samurai wear sentiment as a shield. Poems and proverbs to reassure and calm such sheep. Yet, true warriors walk among them. They are desperate to be freed. Apollyon is a demon name. I chose it when I took command of the Blackstones. It means destroyer. Holden's demon name is Asmodai. Recently, he has preferred his given name. Strange. What the samurai could not admit to themselves was that they were already at war with each other. All I did was show them that fact. We left four daimyo in the swamp. Had they been other than those four, they would have joined forces and solved their problems. But I had chosen well. The waters of the mire rise and fall. Solid ground shifts and moves. Every attempt to build permanent structures there has resulted in disaster. Our world is filled with buried cities, sunken fortresses, and lost ruins. But in the mire, those crumbled remains are only a few centuries old. Time moves much more quickly there. Death waits for us at the end of every road. Somewhere out there, each person has an enemy who will bring about their end. A warrior does not let that knowledge interfere with their duty. The Dawn Empire is vast. Any untamed lands the knights abandoned, any secluded region the Vikings could not reach, 
There you will find samurai. They are persistent. The trees of the mire had witnessed seven wars among the samurai fought, just in the twenty years that I had been rising among the Blackstones. So much for unity. The samurai are so few. They live under the constant threat of extinction. Each warrior has to be the equal of ten of ours or more, if they are to survive. What impressed me most about the daimyo Ayu was her ruthlessness. Yet, she lies to herself about her reasons for what she did. I believe it was unimaginable to her that she simply wanted power. I offered the Emperor's throne to twenty daimyo. Five proved willing to say they would take it to an enemy they knew was untrustworthy. Five liars. Five cowards. I had been hoping for more. There are several ways to break a siege. By shattering the gate. By storming the walls. By starving them out. Or by knowing a secret way in and having the right kind of warrior to use it. Seijuro accepted my offer. The palace was his, and at least 50 of the greatest warriors the samurai chose to fight beside him. They were few, but they were mighty. The city of the samurai stands on a high mesa surrounded by forest. It is one of the most secure fortresses in the land. It has been twice destroyed by fire, and at least six times by civil war. But never by invaders. I wish that I had been there that day. To see the daimyo Ayu and her army lay siege to their own palace. I only wish it had taken longer. The Dawn Empire stretches far to the east. Their capital is here. Yet it was not always. For many generations, their emperor lived elsewhere. He was driven here, I think. I would like to know by what. Few fortresses are better prepared to withstand a siege than that place. My own Blackstone fortress could not hope to endure for a tenth of the time. The tenth emperor, a brutal warlord. One of the few worthy of respect. I had looked into Sejuro's eyes. He was unapologetic in his desire for power. Other daimyo saw this as a flaw. Other daimyo are rotting corpses. Only the most devoted warriors had answered Sejuro's call. At a word, they were prepared to die for their warlord. There it is. The price of unity. The samurai were coming. The citizens of Ashfeld had long left the wilderness for the safety of my walls. For we are their protectors, are we not? Ashfeld liked to remind us of her catastrophic past. Occasionally the ground would shake and a new fire pit would appear. A warning that what had happened once, can happen again. The ruins outside the Blackstone Fortress were fought over again and again. Gangs of thugs, highwaymen, toughs, fighting for every last scrap. Fertile soil for my legion. By the time the samurai came to Ashfeld, the other legions were gone. Yet. The Iron Commanders continued to send us reinforcements and material. We were grateful, even if they are misguided. The Iron Legion lands to the south were more stable than ours. Peaceful. Ashfeld itself fought against stability. And we are all reflections of our homes. Since the war with the Vikings, 
the Blackstone Legion had put down seven rebellions. Martial law was the only law our people understood. The Blackstone Fortress. I took it from a petty lord, one of the last leaders in Ashfeld who dared call himself noble. Now, only warriors rule here. The samurai have struck at my home for weeks. Now, they have cracked open the gate. I hope they burn in the very fires they have lit. My war has come home at last. I will not flee from it. I will win. This place is called the Shard. It appears to be a castle on a hill, but I have been in its depths. It is a castle built on a castle, built on a castle. I have yet to find its bottom. I do not envy the meek and helpless common folk. They live a life of fear. They cannot defend themselves. They cannot be blamed for being what they are. But neither should they be allowed to deny it. I have defended the lower tiers. Now I have been forced back into the upper levels. The escape passages are all blocked. I had them sealed long ago. We will win or die. My castle is vast. It has had many owners. Each legion in turn redecorated to suit their own fashion. I prefer to leave their decorations intact. After all, they are no more. Their symbols are now trophies of my kills. Each legion that falls beneath me each house that we vanquish, each people that we destroy. I keep mementos. I have hundreds. I pit the Vikings against each other and the samurai. Of course, I did the same to my own people. Ashfeld has become a place where no dishonesty can endure. All here know their place. All here understand their nature, predator or prey. 